Hello everyone and welcome to Cheesy Code. In this lecture we will show you how you can create dynamic HTML elements using the data that you get from service call and we will be using jQuery's Ajax method to fetch the data from the web service call. So let's get started. So here I have taken an ASP page named as service.aspx but you can ignore the fact that this is an ASP page. I have just created an ASP website just because I wanted to use web method as we don't have a service call. So to demonstrate the data fetch from a service call, I am here by using web method from ASP.NET. So let's see what we have in HTML. This is my plain HTML. This is the basic title tag and I have added some style, inline style. Now the main thing we have added is reference to the jQuery. This we need because we are using jQuery's Ajax method to hit the service which is web method in our case. Then there is a script. I'll open up this section once we move forward in this lecture. Below is normal h2 tag and there is a button which will be calling a function in the script that will fetch the data for us and it will show it in a tabular form and the data that we will be getting from service call will be programmatically filled, generated inside this table. Let me show you the output first. So this is the page that I have created to show you how we can create dynamic table using a service call. So I'm just going to click here. So this table is dynamically generated using the data that we have received from the call. So let's see what the call is. So this is our code behind page service.aspx.cs In this I have added a web method. So what this web method attribute will do, this will make this get student method behave like a service. So I can remotely hit this particular method through my Ajax call and I get the data. Public and static keywords are used because we have to make it accessible to the remote client which in our case is not exactly the remote client. It's just in the ASPX page that we need this. But still to show you the web service. So this is the dummy data. This whole data would be sent as a JSON string. We will see how in the network call. So for now understand it as a web service, it is returning as the data, we just call it. This method has a parameter that is passing here. I have added this just to show you how parameters are handled in the Ajax call. So let me show you the Ajax call that I have written. So I am opening the script part here. $.ajax, this is the method that jQuery has provided. It makes asynchronous call to the web service. These are the properties of this method. So I'm making a post call and the URL is service.aspx slash getstudents. Getstudents is the name of my web method. In your case, if you have a web service path, you just directly pass on the path over here. And here comes the data. In data, we have to pass on the parameters that the service is expecting. So in our case, I have created a parameter passing here, which was shown over here. We just have to make sure that the web service call is case sensitive. So whatever be the parameter name written over here, it should be exactly same when we pass it through the Ajax call. So I'm just passing the year as 2017. This has to be in form of JSON. When we receive data from web service, it is in the form of JSON string. So what browser does, it converts that data into JSON object and then in our success event, we get that particular data. So what I'm doing here is, I'm just creating HTML string to create my table. In this particular section, I've created the header row. There are th elements inside the row. Then below this, there is a loop going on, on this JSON object that I've received from the web service. So what's happening here is, one by one I'm collecting the row that I've received from web service. Then for those rows, I'm extracting out the data like ID, first name, last name that my web method has sent. Now on the basis of that, I'm creating rows for my table. And then when this whole string is generated, I'm appending that particular thing in my dynamic table that is present over here. So that's what's happening here. Let me show you the network call for this. This is our developer tools of Chrome. If you don't know about it, we have a separate video to tell you about this. 
Now when I click on this button, a call is made to my web method. Let's see what goes inside this call. So this is the response that we got. This is the name of my class which I have created over here. This is my class and these are the properties of my class and this all is present in the form of JSON. That's the whole data that my service has sent and when the call was sent the parameter was sent along with it that is passing here. This is called the request payload. So that's exactly what my call looks like. I'm closing this thing. So this is how you can create dynamic element inside your HTML page. I've shown you the example of creating a table. You can create drop down or anything you want on the basis of the data that you receive. There's a post on our site which you can refer. It teaches you what exactly we have done. So that's all about it. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Thank you for watching.